So now we're going to learn how to make a fashion flat. Um, we're going to do a lot more of this next semester, but this is just your first taste of flats. Um, so we are going to put our, our pattern on, on a flat. Um, so in order to do that, we need to make nice closed shapes, and we're going to go over how to do that as well. So file new, and I'll make a letter. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I have a image of my of a flat that I drew. It's not the best flat in the world, but we can make it a lot better in Illustrator. So this has the front and the back on it. I'm just going to trace the front right now. Um, and this isn't quite straight up and down, and we really want it to be perfectly straight. I drew it kind of crooked, or I photographed it crooked. So I want to try to get get this one as, as straight up and down as I can. That looks pretty close. Um, uh, oops, not hit enter. This isn't Photoshop. Okay, so with that there, we are going to use this as a template layer. So uh, I'm going to make a new layer and lock my first layer. So now I can't accidentally draw on this. Um, we also want guides. We really want guides. Um, so to get guides, we have to go to View Rulers, Show Rulers. We need our rulers to make guides, and then we can drag this guy out. Um, it's important that you lock your guides after you do this, otherwise it will mess things up in one of the next steps. So view guides and then mine says unlock, but yours might say lock guides. So with the pen tool, we are going to uh, start tracing and we're just going to trace the left half of it and then we're going to flip it over to the right so it will then be perfectly symmetrical um, I can click and drag to get my anchors um, or my my handles with corner points right um, or my my anchors with handles are click and drag, and then I can click to turn it into just a regular corner. Click there, I can click and drag to add a handle to this corner. Um, I can always go back and make things a little bit more perfect after. Probably need one there. Right, click to make this a corner, and then come back to the center. So we're starting and ending on the center for any kind of central shapes. That's what we're going to try to do. Um, and before I move on, I mean, we could draw the whole left half and then transform it all at once. But I just want to, I want to review how we would reflect something, although I'm actually going to go over another way of doing it too. Um, my favorite, most basic way is to right click, transform, and choose reflect. We have preview checked, so it is reflecting the right way. And then we're going to hit copy, so we get, we get a second one. If we just hit OK right now, it would just flip this, and that's not quite right, so we have to hit copy. So now we have two, and um, we can either hold shift and slide this straight over so that it slides in a straight line, um, and now it's all perfectly lined up. Or um, if I, with this selected, yeah, if I hover over this anchor point with my black selection tool, um, then when I line up with the matching anchor points on this piece, on the left hand piece, my little anchor point turns, or sorry, my mouse turns white. You see that? So that's symbolizing that we're all lined up with that anchor point. That's what it's saying to me. There we go. So things aren't perfectly lining up on the right, but that's okay because we're going to remove the fashion illustration from behind it eventually. So we're just looking at the left side. Um, okay. Before I move on to um, tracing 
The rest of it, I also want to address um, making this into a closed shape. And to do that, we first have to review the join tool and all of its various functions. So um, I'm going to zoom in right here. So who can review for me, this, should, this is old news by now, but who can review for me the difference between the black selection tool and the white selection tool? Come on, guys. You got it backwards. So yes, black moves around the whole shape. So if I have a shape like this, and let me give it no fill. If I have a shape like that, the black selection tool allows me to click on it and move it around um, the whole shape. So if I have a, another shape, we'll make it this shape. Um, I can select that shape with the black selection tool, move the whole thing around. The white one allows me to move anchor points and handles around specifically. Also line segments. I can click on line segments and move them around. Um, similar to these tools having a different function, the function of join works differently depending on what you've selected your shapes with. So. If I select both of these with my black selection tool, my black selection tool is selecting the whole, the whole shape, both of these whole shapes, and I choose right click join, it's just going to choose one side or the other and connect them together. And you don't have any control over that. Yeah. I recognize like the very right handle is slightly changed already. Huh? Sorry, what? Like, This guy? Yeah, this curve. What about it? It's just slightly changed when you uh, combine those two lines. Oh, yes, it might have. Okay. Um, so what if I just want to Yeah, so if we, choose, if we choose join right now um, with these guys, it's just choosing one of the endpoints and connecting them, and it's kind of at random. I don't know if it chooses. It must choose the ones that are closest together. Um, but we can be more precise than that. Um, so we can choose, uh, we can, uh, this is going to make the same results. We can choose this anchor point and this anchor point. And if we choose right click join on those two selected anchor points, it's going to draw a line between them. But what if we want to join these shapes into a perfectly smooth, um, a perfectly smooth shape? You know, where they, it's like a bean shape. Um, we can do that. We still need to select both of these anchor points. And if these anchor points are exactly on top of one another, join will turn it into one anchor point. Okay? So I select both of them, and then I have to go to right-click average. Right-click average, and we choose both because it's going to put them right in the center of each other, right on top of each other. So right click average, okay. And see how there are four handles right now? That's because there are two anchor points. There are four handles because there are two anchor points on top of one another right there. Yeah, 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 yep, yep. And if we, so we've already averaged and now we choose join and it turns them into one beautiful, one beautiful, beautiful anchor point. Um, because even if these are right next to each other and like you think that looks pretty good and when you're zoomed out it's like basically invisible, um, if we select these and just choose join without doing average, we're going to end up with two anchor points there, um, which we don't want, or that's not the goal of this exercise anyway. So instead, we can select them both by clicking and dragging a box around them and then right click average right click join and now they're both one anchor point. Um, they're probably still a corner anchor point and if we want them to be a smoothing point we can just convert them up here at the top. So if we don't want that butt anymore we can hit that smooth tool. So I'm going to do it again here. Right now if you notice um, uh, sorry it's still oh, so annoying. 
Um, right now, if you notice, if we put a gradient in this, right, the gradient wouldn't go smoothly across the shape. Or if we put our pattern in it, it might fill normally and seamlessly, but it might also fill awkwardly. It might have moved slightly, right? Like it might look like, um, like this where things don't line up perfectly across the center. So we want to make this into a closed shape. That's the goal here. So to do that, I have two anchor points right here, and I want to turn them into one anchor point. So I'm going to click and drag a box around both of them, right-click Average, right-click Join. And it's turned them into one anchor point. Yeah, I'm going to do it for the bottom anchor point. So there's two anchor points here, too. See? Um, and they, they're connected because up there I connected the lines, but they, aren't, they don't have a proper line there. And we can make these into one anchor point by... Um, you can either select one and then hold shift and select the other, or you can click and drag a box around it, and then right-click Average, and hit OK. And now they're on top of each other and right click join. As long as they're on top of each other, it will turn into one anchor point. Um, OK, so I'll probably do it one or two more times in this demo. Um, so from here, I can keep adding. In here, let me put last time I was doing this gradient for most of it, and that was nice. Um, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding detail, but um, I am going to make sure um, that I, I'm going to utilize the stacking abilities of Illustrator in order to get these lines lined up perfectly. So for example, if I want to add, if I want to add this call or this, this sleeve hem onto here, um, I can start a new line, but I'm going to start my new line so that it overlaps with um, my other shape. And I can draw. And let me give it a regular fill. Um, now, this doesn't look very good, but when I go right click, arrange, send to back, because Illustrator allows us to stack things so neatly, that now looks nice and clean. Okay, so we're, we're overlapping these guys to make nice clean shapes. Oh, I don't need to do, I don't need to do that guy. Because we're going we're gonna to flip this one, so I don't need to draw the other side. I only need to draw the left half. Um, so, yeah, we'll do this part. So same thing for here. Um, I am going to go around the outside. Uh, maybe do it a little smoother. And then now that I've gotten that line, the rest of my inside line can just be complete, just trash. Um, because when I go to right click, arrange, send to back, it looks nice. Um, there are lots of ways to make flats that are more precise than this, but this is your first flat. Um, so we're gonna do it that way with stacking. So same thing down here. I can draw these guys on them, um, and I want to end in the center here. I don't want a vertical line in the middle, so I'm actually going to come back here and see that little slash mark? That means I can start my line fresh again from over there. Um, so something like this, it ends in the center. Uh, I'm going to do the skirt in a second. With these three guys, we can select them all at once. Um, and I would probably do the background, the back of the shirt too, but it's, it's fine. We'll do these three and we can right click, transform, reflect, or this is the Reflect tool. It lives under the Rotate tool. We don't use the Rotate tool very much, um, but the Reflect tool does come in handy. 
with Reflect, you grab that tool and then hold Alt. Got to hold Alt. And if you click on the center anchor point, so this is this is going to be the point where the garment reflects around. So if I click there and make sure that vertical is checked, then you can see it's going to flip it perfectly on the first try, and I don't have to do that sliding over action. Got to make sure to click copy again. Um, so down here, right away, I can see that I have kind of a butt shape happening. Um, this shape is very common, and it can end up being like more or less defined depending on your um, your pattern. But I want to turn this into one smooth anchor point. Um, and I have a video from a YouTuber who's really good at this stuff that explains just how to get rid of this kind of butt shape that happens, this VW shape. Um, so anyway, we select, select both of them. I just dragged a little box around them. Right click average and right click join. Um, and they moved into one. There's still kind of a butt shape because I have to click up here and choose smoothing point. Okay, so that's a subtle Subtle difference, but butt shape, smoothing points. And we're only able to do that because I did right click average, right click join. Callie knows all this. <laughs> right click average, right. Next semester it's going to be hardcore, yeah, because we're doing flats. We're going to be doing so many flats next semester. Um, and making these closed shapes is really, really nice and important. Um, so all of this is looking good. Uh, we can um, we can add the lines onto the garment, right? I drew some I drew some lines onto it. Um, we can do that. We could just draw the lines on with the pen tool. That's an option. Um, or if you would like. Uh, you can copy and paste the lines from other parts of the garment. So if I grab this shape with, sorry, white selection tool, if I grab this shape and I select on the center anchor points, I can do Command C and then edit, paste in front. And now with my arrow keys, I can just uh, add that little stitch and it's already the right, it's already the right curve of the bottom. So same thing kind of over here. I could um, copy and paste just this line, right? My white selection tool allows me to copy and paste line segments, which is useful. Control F. And you want to fill them with no fill, otherwise stuff like that happens. And then with the right curve, you can just very easily go in and adjust um, the anchor points so they don't stick out anymore. Um, so that's how you would add detail. Um, I'm going to do the bottom of the dress. I don't add volume to the bottom of the dress until after I've made sure that it's a closed shape. So what do I mean by that? I mean I'm not going to add any of these fullness lines. Same thing uh, here with this section. I have, oops, I have some detail lines right here, right? I don't put those, I don't try to put those into my original shape. What I can do is I can add them later. Like now I could go in um, oops, and I could draw those if I wanted to. This is not the pen tool. You know, and that would add some, some fullness to it. Uh, same thing down here. I'm actually going to make just a regular old kind of rounded shirt. And I want to start way up here. And come over to the corner. Um, so I'm going to put in the corner there, and then I'm going to come straight to the center. I don't, I don't need to do a lot more than that. I'm going to do this in kind of a, a different way. Um, so let me put the gradient on that. So I'm going to review this mirror tool, this reflect tool. We just hold Alt, and then click on. Uh, you have to have it selected with the black selection tool and then hold alt and click and hit copy. Right click, arrange, send to back. So I want to join 
um, this skirt into one shape. Um, to do that, I have to select both of these anchor points down here. Um, so I'm just going to click and drag a box around them. If you're ever stuck, you can't you can't click and drag a box from the um, from the fill outwards. Like if I wanted to select these two anchor points right now, I would have to first turn off the fill on these so that I would be able to select them, if that makes sense. So if I wanted to select these from the top down, like for whatever reason, I could just turn the fill off on these and select them like that. Um, right click average, right click join. And now they are one. They are still a um, there's still a butt point though, a corner point. Um, so I can choose convert up here and get a smoothing point. Now, this doesn't look great. I don't have any fullness on it. Um, I can add that. My favorite way to do it is with, I use the add anchor point tool and then I use the line segment tool. So I'm switching from the pen tool to the add anchor point tool. So I'm gonna add, um, you know, a good number, um, I'm adding like like four of these uh, on each side or so, three or four anchor points on each side. And then with my white selection tool, I'm just dragging these handles so that they're vertical. Um, and I can add fullness in this way. Um, from there, let me throw the fill back on this. I like to use the line segment tool, but the pen tool would work just as fine. And you can add fullness lines. It's nice to add fullness lines of a variety of sizes. So it's starting to look... Um, starting to look pretty good. I mean, I could keep going on this, um, adding in all the rest of the detail. Uh, but uh, I want to address really quick how we would get a hem on this, like how we would put stitch lines on it. And then I will, um, I'll bring in my pattern into the equation. So first off, we can make any line look like a stitch line. Um, I'm going to just draw a line segment here. Let's zoom in on it. There is a panel called the stroke panel. So if you go to window, stroke, here it is. The stroke panel might look like this. It might have only the weights in it. You just have to click on the little bars and then choose show options, right? It could be that it doesn't have enough stuff. So show options and then you can check dashed line. And a good amount of dash is a two point gap and a two point dash. Um, and then what really drives it home is adding this little rounded cap and um, it becomes a nice, a nice little seam line, a nice little detail line on your on your garment. Um, so we could draw that, uh, you know, in here if we wanted to. We could draw it in there. Um, or let's say we want to have a hemline, and this is always good, having a hemline on a dress. Um, we want to have a hemline that follows the curve of this dress like it would naturally. There's a really Fun way to do that. Um, first, we copy and paste to the whole bottom of the skirt. And we want just this bottom line isolated. So to do that, I'm going to delete the rest of the anchor points from up top. So white selection tool. And I can select all of the anchor points that aren't on the bottom line and hit delete. And then remove the fill. No fill needed. And now we could put we could put a dash on that. Or if we've already made a dashed line, 
we can grab the eyedropper tool and click on it and uh, this becomes dashed instantaneously that way. We could click on another dashed line and it would absorb the properties of that. And now when we slide this over here, it uh, pretty, pretty instantly lines up okay. Um, it needs some finesse, like we need to we need to adjust this so that it comes all the way to the edge of the line. Um, what you don't, you don't want it to extend beyond the line. That's no good. Uh, but to the edge of the line. And then I like to line all these anchor points up with their respective fullness lines, which really adds to this illusion of fullness. Um, so that's how to draw flats, right? We're using the stacking abilities of Illustrator. We're drawing with the pen tool. We're reflecting shapes and making them whole again. Um, those are all good practices. So you only have to draw one for this final project, and we're actually going to be doing it in class together. Um, it's our in-class assignment for today or activity. Um, so how do I get my print on there is a very good question. The easiest way to get a print from one Illustrator file to another is to copy and paste the um, turn off my back layer. Um, copy and paste a square that's filled with that pattern um, from one file to another. So here I have a square. It's filled with a pattern. It's filled with a swatch. I can do edit copy and edit paste and notice a new swatch has appeared in my swatches panel. And I can actually delete this swatch right away or that rectangle right away and my swatch stays there. And now, since I made nice closed shapes, I can just apply the Voloroid thing to it and choose a better background color. Um, I don't want to go around and select all of these red guys, so instead I'm going to select same fill color and it selects all the red guys automatically. And then I can choose purple or maybe yellow. Um, and now I can right click transform scale and uncheck transform objects and make this smaller if I like. Um, We can't warp the pattern in Illustrator, or at least I haven't figured it out today. Um, so, but I did want to address puppet warp in Illustrator because it does it does exist, um, and it, it it is helpful. So. Um, it works the same as in Photoshop, but if I grab this guy and let me put regular fill on him, uh, that one doesn't need it. If I grab this shape, it's made of vectors. Um, I can use the Puppet Warp tool similarly to how we used it uh, in the other class, right? So I can. Warp things like this. The benefit to using Puppet Warp in Illustrator is that it um, it's made of vectors. All the images are made of vectors, so it doesn't get distorted at all. Puppet Warp in Photoshop, eventually, you would get to a point where there is um, there's going to be some pixel distortion in this if you make it too big or if you spread things out too much. Um, but in here, there never will be because it's made of vectors. Um, Vic and I auto-traced one of his weird drawings, and then we were making it move and move around in here with um, with auto-trace. So it, it's it is it's very or sorry with auto-trace, and then the the pen tool is it can be very fun. Um, okay. Um, that's a very good question. I forgot to ask that question of Meg. I'm thinking that you would have them on their own 11 by 14 page. Uh, oh, no, I mean like the, the outfit itself, the flat itself, it doesn't need to be 
be like a specific like bulky size. No, I think they should fit on, they're going to, they do have to be in your portfolio, so they should fit into your portfolio. So they should probably be all on their own 11 by 14 page. So that is pretty big. Um, vectors, we can just scale this up to 11 by 14. Um, I also heard tell that if you want to print at 11 by 17, that's okay. Someone told me that recently. So anyway. I've been saying your final portfolio has to be 11 by 14, and you have to find an 11 by 14 portfolio and print all these things at 11 by 14. But I just was told today that if you want to print at 11 by 17 and have your, all your portfolio stuff be at 11 by 17 instead, that that's fine. But 11 by 17 is like where you have to print. So. Yeah, that's what they were saying that if we require it to be 11 by 14, then they have to cut it, which is like not that big a deal, but you could print it 11 by 17, I guess. Um, it just should be consistent across your portfolio. We're gonna talk portfolio next week though. Um, any other questions? Wait. Yes. Next week's our last class. Yes. Yes, because of Thanksgiving.